This is Rain Hamcast podcast number 65, posted April 16th, 2022, voiced by Will Rogers, K5WLR. Do you remember the first time you recorded an interview with an important person, only to learn later it didn't record? A podcast producer recalls his recording software failed to record his first conversation with Dave Sumner, K1ZZ, president of the ARRL for years. That podcaster was Hap Holly, KC9RP, the man behind Rain, the radio amateur information network. Earlier in 2022, Hap was interviewed on the CQ Blind Hams Network. Here's our first of two excerpts from that conversation, introduced by Robert Carter, NC5R. I am Robert, NC5R. We have with us Hap Holly. And my goodness, Hap, I've heard you doing the rain report for I don't even know how many years, but it's a real pleasure and honor to have a chance to talk with you a bit. Welcome to the Blind Hams podcast. Thank you. I grew up in Southern California near San Diego and was first licensed as a ham in 1965 at age 14. You can figure out my age from that. I live near Chicago and have lived here since 1974. I've been retired a year and a half from Horizons for the Blind. I used to take the train out every morning. My wife would drop me off. It was a 45-minute train ride. Late afternoon, she'd pick me up at the uh, platform. I was an audio engineer. Horizons for the Blind is a 501c3 organization that specializes in the reproduction of print materials into large print, braille, and ding, 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 audio. And that was my department. There were, I think, three of us. A you know, humongous department. It was an awful lot to handle, of course. But I enjoyed it a lot there. But after uh, about 20 years in June 2020, I didn't like the direction the company was going. It was under new management. Camille Caffarelli, who founded Horizons for the Blind some 40 years ago plus, passed on. And uh, her son, Keith, took over the company. And I didn't agree with how he did things and so forth. So I said, okay, I'm out of here. My last day was July 3rd, 2020, and uh, July 4th was truly a day of independence. If it's like me, here I wake up and I realize I don't have to go to work today. It's another holiday. But in a way, it's so different not to go to work anymore, isn't it? Well, yeah. Every day is a Saturday. I like that a lot. Yeah, I, I, I like that a lot, too. You know, well, thank you for that. It's good, good to learn a little bit about what you did, and I'm not surprised to hear that it was audio-related, given that you have done audio-related reports for a long time regarding amateur radio. Tell us a, a little bit, if you don't mind, about the RAIN report. How did you get started with it? How long? Just give us a little background on it. In the early 80s, I used to listen to Newsline a lot. Of course, it was Westlink Radio in those days and became Amateur Radio Newsline not long after. I looked forward every week to hearing it because I wanted to know what was going on in amateur radio from a, a blind point of view, since in those days there were so few sources that were accessible to us for getting information and learning the news, especially in, in amateur radio. Well, 1985, I thought, I want more of this. I want more than just 10 minutes a week. That's all it was in those days. Now it's about 19. There seems to be so much more news now than there used to be those years ago. It's kind of funny for a hobby that's supposed to be dying, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, the, the whole digital aspect of things has done so much to make news about amateur radio that much more available to news outlets like Newsline, This Week on Amateur Radio and the like. So in 1985, I started to do some local production work here in Des Plaines, Illinois, which is where my wife and I still are. 
I got to the point to where instead of doing it live every week, I actually started to put it on cassette. Oh, boy. High tech, man. Back in those days, they used to play it on a repeater. There was a repeater that was called the Bear. The broadcast employees amateur repeater, for whatever reason, local broadcasters never got involved much. So that left a, a door open for geeks like me that wanted to actually have a net that did something besides just talk about testing dates and volunteer examiner times and uh, that sort of thing. By 1988, I had put the production that I was doing, which was interviewing people at the time. It went national. Well, it was on cassette, and I I had the audacity to charge money for it. Yes, I monetized a term I just learned about three or four days ago. I monetized my RP report, it was called, and charged, so what did I charge? I think uh, $5 a month or something. I think I had five subscribers, but, you know, hands are cheap. How else can we buy all these expensive radios? Uh, oh, I wonder about that sometimes. That's how it got started. That was uh, 1990 that the RAIN report actually started. RAIN is an acronym for Radio Amateur Information Network. It was still on cassette for me in 96. It first became available in real, <clears throat> real audio on the uh, Internet. And then by 2000, which is the year I started working at Horizons for the Blind, I was learning how to use computers in the meantime and started producing the RAID report in its entirety digitally by 2000. Three and have been ever since, and I still have the website, therainreport.com. In 2019, I got to where I really didn't want to do a weekly program anymore. It got too much like work. I was working five days a week and got home on Fridays and then spent the next five, six hours putting the RAIN report together. I promised myself. When I started it in 1990, that when it became work, when it became a job, unpaid, mind you, I would stop. I did in June of 2019. But the editing bug bit me again. Only two months after I had put it all on the shelf and said, ah, that's it. You're learning about Rain Hamcast podcast producer, Hap Holly, KC9RP. Hap was interviewed earlier in 2022 on the CQ Blind Hams Network. We'll resume our first of two excerpts from that conversation after you identify your station. This is Rain Hamcast Podcast number 65 for April 16th, 2022. I'm Will Rogers, K5WLR. We'll be right back. This is the Rain Hamcast podcast, available on the RainReport.com and on YouTube. I started then what was called the Rain Hamcast, and I began to produce that every other week. Two years later, I now have the Rain Hamcast podcast. I now have the podcast version, and uh, that will be of help, especially to you who have the Victor Reader stream, which I have never had, and uh, you now can get it, if you have nothing else to do, on your uh, Victor stream. Yeah, there's about eight platforms, I think, if it's like uh, CQ Bond Ams. We go out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, there's Spreaker, there's several platforms, and I'm pretty sure you checked all the boxes uh, available through Anchor at .fm like that's what we use. Whatever the case is, now that's where it is, and I am enjoying it a whole lot more. A, it's every two weeks. B, I'm now <clears throat> retired, and therefore I've got the time to do it and and some motivation. And, and oh, also, it's on YouTube now as well, the Rain Report channel. I'm really curious, though, Hap, going back in time for a moment, 
how did you do those early interviews before we had Skype and Zoom and all these ways of connecting with each other digitally to do these kinds of interviews? Did you do them on the phone? Or I'm curious, how, how did you manage to interview people back then? Yes, it's called Ma Bell, as we used to call it, the telephone. And it's funny because when you listen to some early RAIN reports, and a lot of it is archived on the RAINReport.com. I'm still trying to find some more from 92. You listen to some of the early stuff. The line noise from a long distance call from Chicago to California, for instance. By today's standards, it would be annoying and unacceptable. Uh, Mr. Mendelssohn, uh, this is uh, so-and-so representing the Hall of Science. What frequency do you want us to put the repeater we're about to purchase on? And I said to him, there are no two-meter frequencies. And he said, you don't understand, Mr. Mendelssohn. This is the Hall of Science. We are the club in the metro New York area. Well, the club, as it comes round, has about 35 members, the, the mighty hall of science, as they call themselves on the air. I recorded the um, interviews on a test scan port studio for the non-audio file, and I one of those. It was a cassette deck that ran twice the normal speed of a cassette deck and had DBX noise reduction, which is even more than C. When I did start archiving it on cassette, I used uh, Adobe C. So there wasn't a whole lot of noise then on the actual recording other than from the phone line. Doing a podcast myself and having done it for more than 10 years, I understand about how it gets old to come home from work on Friday and have this big task ahead. It takes some real commitment and it's challenging sometimes to get people lined up to come on and be interviewed and have all the scheduling work out. There's a lot to it. Man, I really appreciate how you stuck with this all these years. It's very cool. Thanks for telling us about that. Well, one thing that really helped a lot is that Beginning in, in around 88 or 89, I started going to the Dayton Hamvention, and I worked out an agreement with management there, unpaid, of course, to record the forums. And they had four forum rooms, and I was able to patch into the mixer in each of the forum rooms and record them on the APH four-track GE recorders that so many folks had, and I would record cassettes and, of course, at half the normal speed and four tracks. So I could get an hour and a half per track, and I could get four tracks per cassette. These were C90s, of course. I was able to have the tape get turned over every hour and a half in each of the forum rooms so that it would record all the forums, and I would bring them home, and over the next year, would catalog them and pick out what talks were useful that did not rely upon the visual aspects. And that's really too bad, because there were a number of presentations I couldn't use, because the speaker relied too much on his or her video element. But there were others that would uh, mention, now, as you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see Walter Cronkite standing on the Empire State Building, throwing <laughs> peaches off the top and having them land down below on people. It's a great visual. But if it was a whole lot more technical, as it typically was, what was being viewed then it really didn't work because you had to be able to see it in order to understand what was being talked about, what the speaker was trying to portray. So I recorded all the forums starting in the early 90s, and then eventually by 2000, I was using a little Olympus recorders. They were handheld, and they were very small. They were record MP3 or WMA or wave. I would record the whole day without having to have any tapes flipped over. It was great. And then I would take it back to the motel room where my wife and I were staying, and I would take each day's content and transfer it over to a laptop that I had JAWS on and took that home. 
had such really good audio. The cassette audio wasn't bad and was so much easier to edit once I was able to do it digitally. I think I did it like 192, you know, 44.1, that sort of thing. Once I got it home, then I would listen to it and edit it in way format. Once it's done editing and once I had the script written and sent to whomever and then returned, then it would convert it to MP3, which is what I do with it still today. This has been the first of two excerpts from The Man Behind Rain, a CQ Blind Ham Network interview conducted earlier this year with Hap Holly KC9RP. We'll bring you our conclusion to this conversation next time on the rainreport.com, the Rain Report channel on YouTube, or wherever you find the Rain Hamcast podcast. Hap Holly KC9RP edits and produces this bi weekly ham radio hamcast without monetization. Your support and feedback are welcome via PayPal to hap at the rainreport.com. Rain Hamcast Podcast number 66 will post April 30th, 2022. Copyright 1985-2022, Rain, the Radio Amateur Information Network. All rights reserved. Rain program is made available under a Creative Commons license. You are encouraged to download, share, post, and transmit these Rain Hamcasts in their entirety via amateur radio. YouTube assistance from Tom Shimizu, N9JDI. 73 from Rain, the Radio Amateur Information Network. I'm Will Rogers, K5WLR. Don't forget to keep on hamming.